that's smaller. And here's what the original side was, just for comparison. <laughs> Quite dramatic. Pretty stark difference between uh, something that hasn't been seven miles deep in the ocean and something that has. Glad I'm not going there. Hmm. <laughs> At the Mariana Trench, human life is impossible. We're not equipped to resist those kinds of pressures. And so it's necessary to protect humans from that type of an environment. The challenge to engineers was how to accomplish this. In 1953, Swiss scientist Auguste Picard designed the Trieste, a pioneering vehicle that could withstand the crushing pressures. The submersible was dominated by a 50-foot-long hull filled with light aviation gasoline and lead weights to control buoyancy. Slung underneath it was a tiny six-foot spherical cabin with five-inch thick steel walls. Finally, after seven years of modifications and manned test dives no deeper than three and a half miles, the Trieste was ready to attempt the seven miles to the bottom of the trench. The commander of this perilous undertaking was U.S. Navy Lieutenant and Deep Sea Explorer Don Walsh. I know the astronauts that go through this all the time. Why do you have to be there? Why can't you just put up a robot to do things? You've got to be there because that's what we do. Only a few officers and scientists knew about the risky mission launched in January 1960 from the western Pacific island of Guam. Guam, in those days, was kind of backwater. It was just right for us because we were trying to do this project sort of out of sight because we weren't too sure it was going to work. The Navy just didn't want to be embarrassed by a failed science spectacular. Accompanying Walsh was the son of the Trieste designer, engineer and oceanographer Jacques Picard. The two men would spend the next nine hours squeezed inside the cramped sphere. And we had um, 20 cubic feet of space inside. That's about the same as a household refrigerator. And the temperature was almost that cold inside. It was a drama. The Marianas Trench is one of the most remote, inhospitable places on Earth. In January 1960, two deep-sea explorers, Don Walsh and Jacques Picard, plunged into its depths on board the submersible, the Trieste. At a speed of just three miles per hour, they began a slow descent into the twilight zone. By 3,000 feet, the darkness was total. The only illumination was from the Trieste's powerful lights. The depths we're operating at, it was always black. The only thing that lit up the abyss was the bioluminescence from uh, animals and plankton. Like fireflies, they carry their own light sources with them. Encased in their five inch thick steel sphere, Walsh and Picard quickly passed their test dive record of 18,000 feet. Everything appeared to be going to plan. At the rear of the cabin, the crew were protected by a double layer of glass. But two hours into the dive, the outer pane cracked. We uh, had a great big bang. We didn't know what it was. We were about 20,000 feet. And we looked around and checked everything. Every square inch of the tiny life-supporting capsule was fighting back eight tons of pressure. With the outer pane broken, the only thing between the men and instant death was a single pane of glass. If the inner window had cracked, um, we would have been instantly dead. <laughs> Maybe even before we knew it. But incredibly, the inner pane remained watertight. Walsh and Picard decided to continue the descent. 
After a tense, claustrophobic four hours and 48 minutes, they approach the bottom of the trench, only to be startled by movement on the sea floor. Just before we landed, we saw a flatfish, about a foot long, and that's a bottom-dwelling fish, so if you see one, there are others. Nobody expected to see life at these crushing depths, but it meant the explorers had reached their goal. The very bottom of Mariana's Trench. The depth gauge with a reading of 35,800 feet, nearly seven miles below the surface, confirmed the sonar findings. Squeezed inside their bubble of breathable air, the two explorers were closer to the Earth's center than man had ever been. We took a self-portrait. That's the picture that you see. They were going to do it, and we did it. But there was work to be done. Walsh and Picard wanted to make detailed observations of the enormous trench. Unfortunately, the Trieste stirred up a cloud of fine, powdery sediment from the sea floor that obscured their view. It's like being a bowl of milk at that point. So, realizing we weren't going to see anything, we decided to go on back up to the surface. Montiara de Plan and Trieste, surfaces after a descent into the Marianas Trench. After nine grueling hours underwater, Walsh and Picard returned to the surface on January 23, 1960, and officially entered the record books, the deepest dive of all time. To this day, their extraordinary feat has never been repeated. The mission was a success, but the mystery remained. Geologists still didn't understand what could have formed immense trench. And if they couldn't find the answer inside the trench, they would have to look elsewhere. Perhaps there was something somewhere on the ocean floor that might explain the trench's origins. Throughout the 50s and 60s, a team of geologists led by Princeton's Harry Hess compiled sonar data from all of the world's oceans. And your boys are playing? It was as though they had pulled out a giant plug to drain away all the water and expose the ocean floor. Their maps revealed that the Marianas Trench is just a tiny fraction of a network of enormous underwater canyons stretching right around the planet. But yeah, that's 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 yeah. Running parallel to the trench on the other side of the Pacific, the map shows that the down in the so not fighting with totally area. The East Pacific Ridge. And this, too, is part of a global network, a 40,000-mile-long chain of mountain ranges that ring the globe like the seams of a baseball to make the largest geological feature on Earth. It was a major development in the investigation, one that scientists you. hope might explain the your belly. formation. Let's take that little thing off there. The next step was clear. There, now you're not stepping on it anymore. Whether there was a connection between the trench what about and the you? East you're okay. Ridge. The breakthrough came from the unlikeliest of sources. During the Cold War, the U.S. built a vast network of underground seismometers to pick up atomic bomb testing around the world. Inadvertently, the seismometers also yeah. detected naturally occurring earthquakes. When geologists plotted these on a map, a pattern emerged. The earthquakes were clustered along the ocean's ridges and trenches. It was a discovery that transformed our understanding of the Earth. Geologists realized the friction causes earthquakes comes from movements that must be occurring deep beneath the ridges and trenches. With this great investment in seismology, it became possible to locate very precisely where earthquakes had occurred. 
And it was these things, the precise location, the depth, and the motion, that really gave the outlines of plate tectonics. It was the birth of an extraordinary new theory. The solid layer of rock, the crust on which the land and ocean sits, is broken up into a series of vast slabs that geologists call tectonic plates. It's these plates that are moving, grinding past each other, and triggering earthquakes. The underwater ridges and trenches sit on the boundaries between tectonic plates. The East Pacific Ridge and the Marianas Trench lie on opposite edges of the Pacific Plate. The journey to discover what formed the Marianas Trench is accumulating additional evidence. The Trieste dived to the bottom of the trench and confirmed that it is the deepest point on the planet. Sonar maps then revealed the East Pacific Ocean Ridge running parallel to the trench. To solve the mystery of the Marianas Trench, investigators needed to find out exactly what was happening at the East Pacific Ridge. And that meant exploring these vast mountains, 8,000 feet underwater. Pieces of the Marianas Trench puzzle are falling into place with the knowledge that it lies on the western edge of the Pacific tectonic plate. On the opposite side of the plate lies the East Pacific Ocean Ridge, part of an enormous chain of underwater mountain ranges that ring the globe to create the largest geological feature on Earth. Scientists had a hunch that this colossal ridge might help explain how the trench was formed found a major clue halfway round the globe, where the ridge passed beneath the middle of the Atlantic Ocean. During the Cold War, the U.S. Navy developed a new technique to spot Soviet submarines. They scanned the seas with a tool called MAD, a magnetic anomaly detector, which could pinpoint steel hulls lurking in the deep but they stumbled across something else. Running parallel on either side of the ridge, they found strange stripes of magnetic rocks, alternating positive and negative away from the ridge's peak. Here's the mid-Atlantic ridge coming down through here. Almost perfectly symmetric on either side of that are these white and black stripes. These have often been called zebra stripes. Geologists know that the Earth is like a giant magnet with a north and a south pole. But the magnetic poles aren't fixed. Every 300,000 years or so, the magnetic field suddenly flips 180 degrees. When the field flips, a compass that was previously pointing north will swing to the south. This reversing of the Earth's magnetic field is a very interesting and exciting but very puzzling phenomenon for geophysicists to explain. Scientists think this reversal explains the stripes either side of the ocean ridge. 